Support for the leadoff on WGLT and WGLT.org comes from the Central Illinois Regional Airport, offering seasonal nonstop service to Denver. Outdoor concerts, hiking, and more activities in the Mile High City are one flight away on Frontier Airlines. Close, convenient, Sierra. More at CIRA.com. There's a reason why Bloomington Normal isn't swarming with the sounds of cicadas. That's one of the things you need to know to start your day for Friday, June 7th. I'm Ryan Denham, and this is WGLT's The Leadoff. Now let's lead off with cicadas. It was supposed to be pretty noisy right now. Two broods of periodic cicadas, one on a 17-year cycle, the other on a 13-year cycle, are emerging at the same time. But as WGLT's Charlie Schlenker reports, many McLean County residents have not heard that pumped-up volume so much. Emily Baldoni of Normal has been looking everywhere in town for cicadas. She's found nothing big, though she was hopeful as we caught up to her on the Illinois State University quad. I'm hearing like one single cicada. Like um, it starts with like a little chick, 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 and then it, whoa. Uh, now it stopped. So not such a cicada rager after all for McLean County. State entomologist Chris Dietrich says you can blame a housing shortage for cicadas, not the one for humans. They're really patchy because they require a certain kind of habitat, specifically mature forests. And as you know, much of Illinois was historically prairie and currently mostly corn and soybean fields. Decatur and Springfield, meanwhile, have lots and lots of cicada karaoke. Dietrich says since you need forest undisturbed for several decades to have periodic cicadas, and preferably a lot longer because cicadas don't get around so much, you should look to land near waterways to find them. I have seen reports of large numbers of cicadas from the Mackinac River area, like Lake Bloomington, those areas north of town. Still, Dietrich says the emergence of the 17-year cicadas and the 13-year cicadas together for the first time in a couple centuries is an opportunity for new science. Colleagues who study cicadas were just conducting some experiments this year to see if the northern and southern broods would interbreed with each other. No results yet on hookups of these Romeo and Juliet families of cicadas. Meanwhile, Emily Baldoni will continue this year's cicada quest outside of Bloomington Normal. Chris Dietrich says Baldoni might want to hurry. A mild winter and warm spring means cicada party time kicked off earlier than usual this year, and in some spots it's almost last call. If you miss out, though, Dietrich points out, you still have the comforting late summer sound of annual cicadas to look forward to. With reporting from Melissa Ellen, for the leadoff, I'm Charlie Schlenker. Here's some other stories we're following in the WGLT newsroom. The city of Bloomington is making changes to its leak adjustment policy and line repair programs, including a lower monthly cost and higher coverage cap that protects residents in the case of a costly water or sewer bill caused by a leak. The electric automaker Rivian says its second-generation R1 SUV and pickup are now available. They include many under-the-hood tech upgrades, including more power, performance, and range. And ISU's theater and dance department has rebranded to the School of Theater, Dance, and Film that acknowledges a film and digital media major with about three dozen students enrolled. You can find more on these stories at WGLT.org. The new state budget just signed into law eliminates the state's sales tax on groceries. The town of Normal and city of Bloomington will lose a big chunk of revenue when that happens because the state shared some of that money. In this interview with WGLT's Charlie Schlenker, Mayor Chris Coos of Normal says it's not yet clear what the town will do to cope. We objected to it um, at the municipal level through Illinois Municipal League, but we're looking at our options. Uh, I mean, it's a significant hit for the town of Normal. It's about $2.6 million in lost revenue. So uh, we may adopt it locally, um, but we haven't had that conversation in depth yet. There was a murder-suicide in Normal last week. A longtime elementary school teacher was killed by her ex just a week after the filing of final divorce papers. What would you like to say uh, as mayor about the murder in this town? It's certainly a tragic event, and um, the the poor children that that had to go through that, uh, you know, our hearts really go out to the, to that family, and and what a struggle for those kids going forward. It's. It's a horrible situation, and unfortunately, it happens too often. Uh, If you're going to ask me personally, I would say uh, mental health issues uh, is something that 
we need to work more on as a community and um, gun control needs to be tighter especially with people with with mental health issues uh, their ability to access firearms should be more restricted how can the system of courts law enforcement and health care be actually improved to make this less likely because it everybody had some insight or experience with matthew moore before he he committed the atrocity you know it's it's hard for me to answer that the, the professionals are going to uh, be better at that, but it's the more proactive uh, that we can be in terms of what's allowed by the legal system in terms of mental health issues and uh, gun access, being more proactive and, and having better outreach before these events happen is about as much as we can do. And unfortunately, they're going to continue to happen, whether it's normal Bloomington, Chicago, Poughkeepsie, whatever. It's a national problem, and it's something we need to address. And it's it's damaging to families, and and it's heartbreaking. On a uh, happier, more uplifting note, Fairview Aquatic Center is being renamed for former Mayor Kent Carriker, whose family were pool rats, as the saying went in their early years. A lot of public officials never get something with their name on it. What makes Kent Carriker rise to that next level, deserving generational recognition? Well, Kent was a was a great mayor. He was a very effective mayor in his time. Um, and uh, aquatics and parks were, were something that he was very proud of. And a lot of the upgrades for Anderson uh, Park and Fairview Park were a result of, um, of you know, Kent's moving those projects forward of his initiatives with that. Um, it was very important to him, and um, it was important to his family. I, you know, one of the takeaways from it when we, we made that announcement came from his kids. We're calling it the Ken M. Carriker Aquatic Center. They always called it Grandpa's Pool. That's Mayor Chris Coos speaking with WGLT's Charlie Schlenker. You can read or listen to the rest of their conversation at WGLT.org. Before we let you go, Bloomington's annual steampunk festival, Cogs and Corsets, returns to downtown today and tomorrow. There's live music, vendors, and Victorian games aplenty. That's it for today. I'm Ryan Denham. You can subscribe to The Leadoff on the NPR app or wherever you get your podcasts.